All right, what were we doing? That's right. Gotta eliminate High Overseer Campbell. Oh, Cor Corvo. Hello. I'm Callista. I work here for Admiral Havelock. I'm sorry to intrude on your business, but this is important. I suspect you're going to kill the High Overseer. That wretched man. There's really no reason for you to listen to me. But my uncle, Jeff Kernow, still serves as captain in the City Watch. But he's a good man. Captain Kernow. Only family. The chatter in servant circles is that Campbell just took delivery of an exotic poison. And I think I know why. My uncle's not corruptible like the rest of them. Campbell is going to poison my uncle. Do you think you could protect him? You used to do that, right? Before you had your current profession. Before you became an assassin. Yeah, we can do that. Also, haven't killed anybody. So to call me an assassin is kind of... I don't know. We'll protect them. Ah! Right. I like how I just remember where the rune is. <laughs> Alright. Let's go talk to... Oh! New thing. Does part of the soul live in the heart? If the heart keeps beating, does that mean that the spirit is never released into oblivion? I can keep a heart beating forever with electricity, but what does that mean for any essence trapped within? It'd be easier if I created these processes in waking hours. I am uneasy pursuing avenues that emanate from my dreaming mind. There's a lot of, um, spiritualism mixed in. Oh, there's Pierre's workshop key. Yeah, there's a lot of spiritualism mixed in with the scientific aspects of things in this game. I don't know the saying, which is really cool. I played the heck out of this game, but so seldom have I actually looked really closely at the, the world. Hey, Samuel. Just wondering, sir, if you thought about perhaps seeing Piero before venturing into the Overseer's Nest. I'd recommend going with the best gear you can get together. Ready to go? We bought everything. Just give the signal. Yep. Let's go. Well, didn't expect it to load that quick. a rough trip. Used to be to go straight up Clavering Boulevard, but now it's not so easy. Half the city's dead of the plague. The other half's fighting over what's left. City Watch still holds the bigger streets, and they've set up those wall of light checkpoints. A man walks through one of those, and he ends up burned to a crisp. Everything not controlled nice. by the City Watch is gang territory. And there are the real odd birds living on the fringes like that Granny Rags. They say she's nuts. I don't know which is worse. Just take your pick. Ooh, I love the little particles of droplets of water on my lens there. Whoop. Let's go. It's nearly midnight. But easy, damn it. It's a nice touch. The boat. Canal's got enough shit in it as it is. Ah. Let's go. It's nearly midnight. But easy, damn it. Keep him in the boat. Canal's got enough shit in it as it is. Damn you, furry Phil. Is it? I think that last one was moving. What? Uh, yeah, that guy? 
Not possible. I inspected them myself. Keep working. One, two, three, heave! Hey, lady, I'm not going to take pocket you. Attention, Dunwall citizens. This is a special announcement from our honorable Lord Regent. Yeah. This is the Lord Regent speaking. It is with regret that I announce that my term as Lord Regent has been extended through the month of harvest and potentially beyond. In addition, go talk to the old lady. The overseers of the Abbey of the Everyman remain in service to the state and are in. Oh no, that's not a nice thing. Just garbage. Dear? Is that you, my dear husband? Oh, my eyes aren't what they used to be. Have you seen my little birdies? Oh, the dear things must be Poor starving little birdies. without their granny. Here, birdies. Here. Oh, my, my, my. I think I have gentlemen callers again, but not the way I used to, not the nice ones. I hear them. And they're not very polite ones, either. Granny Rags, Granny Rags, let us in. Ah, oh, well, they'll go away again if they know what's good for them. But what a bother. Here's the key to the front door, love. You'll see to those ruffians, won't you? Yes, we will, but we're not going to go through the front door. We're going to go up the stairs. I think the little birdies are sad today. And let us in, Granny. I bet she can't even hear us. She's blind, not deaf. We're here to do your work. She's not stupid either. Are you asleep? Get up. It's just a matter of time, buddy. Hey, wake up. Hear me? Oh, I'll find you. There we go. All unconscious. Nobody had to die there. Nobody saw me. Which is the name of our game. Did you hear that the Miller's wife left him for the captain? Sorry, I'm looting all your stuff, Granny. Oh, my dear. I knew you'd help me with those ill-mannered boys. My brave man. Listen, Granny has a birthday present for you. I got it from the outsider, and now I'm giving it to you. Go on. It's upstairs. On the vanity. I think you'll cut a nice figure with it. Remember how we used to dance? Our parties were even grander than those at the Boyle Manor. Everyone wanted to come. She's creepy, but she gives me things. I hope you like the little gift I got for you. It's the least I could do for turning those louts away. I can't bear these Bottle Street children. Ruffians, every last one of them. Rotten apples. And that slack jaw is the worst of the lot. You know what I just thought of? You could do something else for me. Another little favor. And I'd give you another present. Another lovely rune carved from the bones of a dead whale. Do you remember my doctor, dear? Dr. Galvani? Now there was a clever man. He's got all sorts of nasty rat guts and disease in his laboratory. Mm. Wouldn't it be a shame Yummy. if some of that mess Found its way into the Bottle Street Gang's elixir still? That'd teach him. See to it, dear. I'll find you another present just like the first. Galvani lives on Clavering Boulevard. Or at least he used to. Those were the days. Now run off. My baby birdies are hungry. So precious. Hmm. All right. But they're shy. 
You'll have to go or they won't come. Get out. Oh, she doesn't like that we came out here. Be careful, Corvo. They call her Granny Rags. You wouldn't recognize her real name, or even the name of her family. But an emperor begged for her hand once, and rich young men fought each other for her favor. I watched her consider them all, measure their worth, and find them wanting. Then, she made a different choice. Hmm. You're on your way to face the High Overseer. The leader of a great cult dedicated to loathing me. What will you do, I wonder? What will we do? Hello, Granny. Goodbye, Granny. Check you. Hey. <laughs> nice little death pose there. Oh, well, they're not dead. But I think. Are you sure? Because you know we have to check you over. Inspection fee. Nah, he saw me. Are you sure? Because you know we Okay. I think when they don't turn red, I think if they don't turn red, we're okay. Anyone there? Hey, buddy. I owe you, brother. I won't ask about the mask. Yeah, brother. I don't want my face seen either pulling a stunt like that. You know what? I'll return the favor. Come by Griff's shop. That's my business. Well, it was at one time, but now I'm reduced to scavenging things from here and there as the city dies. If you need anything, I wouldn't mind trading for a little money. Maybe someday the plague will blow over and everything will go back to normal. But until then, it's scavenging for me. All right, Griff. Want to look at some of the things I found? Good prices, I swear. Let me see what you've got. 100 coins for sleep darts. Holy cow. Blueprint Sokolov's formula. Blueprint lens magnification. That's pretty good. No, I didn't want to buy bolts. Well, that's all my money. How awesome is that? Oh, here's a bone charm like over out on that pier where the guards are dumping the bodies. I don't know that I want to get that. Let's see. Food heals you slightly more. We'll equip that for now. Bone charms. Excerpt from a book on sailing traditions in Scrimshaw. Bone charms. A sailor's blessing, they say. The carving itself is a practice from long back, passed from father to son, old man salt to greenhorn, still getting his sea legs beneath him. In the old times, men cut into the tusks of ice seals and into the arm-long fangs of bears that roam the isles north of Tivia. Once the, whole, once the whale trade began, the practitioners went to engraving the bones of those great beasts, rendering charms that sing in the night and grant some small boon to a man's vigor or defense against pregnancy. Oh! Is that, is that how that works? I see. Alright, well, this guy died in here. Oh, they both died in here. 
Well, that's unfortunate. Can't see anything. I don't think there's anything else to loot in here. They are burning whales. Are they now? Yeah, I don't care enough to deal with those guards over there. The doom of I don't need to get all of the bone charms. This playthrough is about. This playthrough is about getting through undetected and non lethally. That's what I need to focus on. I don't need shit from you. Alright. Dr. Galvani's offices. I think we can just... Whoops. Enter. Okay. Obviously the plague rat is distinct from the ordinary rat, but in what respect? Its size and the coarseness of its fur, and I believe in intelligence, although the experiments there are not complete. Coriander Zoological Survey describes only the ordinary rat which means plague rats have only been here for five or seven years at most. This was not a gradual mm. migration. Could they have been introduced on purpose? Perhaps by a foreign power. <clears throat> rat behavior and extermination. Excerpt from a series of interviews with street workers by Rat Catcher Lena. Used to be, you'd go out with a bag, a stick, and a nail in the end, and catch as many rats as you could in a night. The city watch paid by weight. My husband Benjamin and I mostly worked alone. And we got by. If we found a place where the rats were real bad, sometimes we'd hire a crew of street brats to work with us, the younger ones who didn't make trouble. We'd pay them with bread and apple cider. But once the plague came, the rats were different. Meaner, bigger, and a little quicker. You had to watch yourself. If you got cornered, they'd turn and the swarm would come back at you. I'd barely got away with my own skin a few times down, the, down in the sewers. The bites hurt afterwards, but it was the sounds they made that stayed in your dreams at night. It got more dangerous and the city watch started paying better, but that didn't last long because after a while, too many people had been stripped clean trying to fill up a bag. One slip and they'd be all over you, gnawing, trying to chew down to the bone. That's how I lost my poor Benji. Ah, oh, poor Benji. Oh, I just lost my controller. Poor controller. Yeah. There we go. Guards, dice. There's guards all over down there. Looks like a maid and a guard down there. Alright, let's read the book I found over here. The Rat Plague, excerpt from a natural philosopher's notes. For over a year, I studied this cursed plague, collecting and dissecting rats by the thousands. Given their rapid gestation and maturation cycle, it's possible to breed them for numerous generations. The rodents themselves seem immune to the plague, but they pass it readily between members of their own species, perhaps through mites. The blood of the rats tells its own story, allowing me to gauge the number of generations that a given group of rats have lived with the plague. As such, a nagging question remains. The rats collected in the poorest parts of town, in the slums, exhibit the oldest strains of the plague, while those found near the docks, where the foreign plague-bearing rats would presumably have entered the city, exhibit a younger strain of the plague. Could this mean that the rats were transported to the slums in some way that is not obvious? I will continue my research. If nothing else, I am living proof that Sokolov's elixir and Piero's remedy are very effective at protecting against the plague. If one consumes enough of this stuff. Wow, so he's discovering that the rats have been 
possibly introduced into the slums. Ooh, process way low. Most interesting. 287. That means there's a safe somewhere. Galvani Academy notice. Galvani, the latest case should arrive within a week, containing all the components you need. Be careful with the white phosphorus. Can't have you getting all fossy jaw like the tanners at the edge of the city, poor bastards. Sorry, you have to practice in secret. The vivisectionists should be celebrated, revered even. Cutting up rats should be done in the town square with a crowd of eager students taking notes, not in some dirty little secret room hidden behind a wall of books. Hmm. Anyway, lucky for you to have an old friend who never left the academy. Let me know what else you need, but remember it might be a month before I can put together another shipment. Yours in knowledge, Artemis Moore, Procurement Clerk and Provisioner, Academy of Natural Philosophy, South Wing. P.S. Next time you're nearby, come in for an afternoon. We've stayed fairly insulated from the plague, since so few come and go here, and we've got quite the stock of Tivian brandy. He's got friends in high places. Fake book. There's the rat viscera. I think there's a... There's no rune in here? Really? I could have sworn I remembered a rune being in this building. Huh. Sewer capacity in the month of nets. Read that in a second. There we go. Probably shouldn't do that. Sewer capacity in the month of nets. Excerpted interview attached to a formal report by CityWorks Crew 17A. I have been asked to tell the problem, so here it is. It's been a year, every year that we work like men gone mad during the month of nets. I don't hardly see my family. It's bad enough that the works is clogged with trash from the catch, pieces of crates and nets, but the water smells of hagfish guts too. We gotta get it done before the month of rain, or you know what. And it ain't like we get help from those pricks in Silver Engineering either. Been at this job for nigh on 28 years and I've never seen one of them come below, except to measure will it hold when they go putting up one of their fancy new bridges. So these last three years have been the worst, and here's why. It's the river crusts. Moved into the works. We hear a man in your head yell and scream like he's burning up, and we all climb fast. No other choice. Tell you what was a choice is that accent I chose. That was a choice. Alright. Interesting. It's a flower he's dissected. River crusts are vulnerable when they get their open their protective shells to spit acidic slime on their prey. Acidic slime on their prey. So this is river crust. Oh, so we got some information from Dr. Galvani's board here. Nothing from that one. 287. Well, I think I know where the safe is. I think I remember. Oh, but there's more here. The Leviathan Sorrow. Exit from a report on a treaty spanned by the Red Shore Trade Council. Little, of no little is known of Picotti, credited with this series of pamphlets arguing against the whaling trade. While he is gifted, his viewers are nonsense his views are nonsense and threaten the economic underpinnings of the empire. Number one, enslavement. On the breeding and husbanding of whales versus the hunting of the beasts in the wild after a natural and free life cycle, Picotti offers no solutions for where these massive malevolent creatures might be pastured. Number two, disillusion. Laments on the destruction of social bonds between herd members. Picotti actually sees them as, or uses the term, families. Number three, harmony. Drivel on the aesthetic wonder of what is, in reality, the great and terrible ocean that ever threatens to swallow us, includes arguments on the gentle nature of the brutes, a notion refuted by seamen who return to shore wide-eyed with tales of the whale's savagery. Number four, disruption. 
Here, Picotti is on his weakest footing, issuing up feverish warnings against the displacement or transference of natural beasts from their native environments. Interesting. We've got an activist here. Okay, I think the easiest way to get down to the next level is going to be go outside. In through the next door. Monch. Ah. And I don't remember. I was so close. Oh, I got 200 going. 200 uh, coins from that. Wait. Did you touch the door handle to Dr. Galvani's lab? Yeah. I think so. Then you have to scrub. The rats get their vital essences everywhere, the doctor said. Vital essence? It's kind of neat how they... I mean, guts? I think so. so have the distortion through the scrubbing. glass. You're unclean. Unclean? That's nonsense. Can't we just... No, I told you. With rubbing alcohol or white vinegar. All right, all right. What is he doing there? Ambrose says he breeds rats that carry the plague. Your friends are ignorant. The doctor is a brilliant man. If anyone can save this city, it's him. The royal physician is going to save us. Meyer's new elixir is twice as good against the plague. I don't understand how Galvani can admire Sokolov. Royal physician or not, I hear tell he's a beast. A superstitious philanderer who spends more time with prostitutes than he does in the laboratory. Slander. Is this what it's going to be like when we're married? It is, <laughs> isn't it? I hope not. I'm telling you now, I don't have the endurance for it. Okay. Did she see me? I don't think she saw me. I think she almost saw me. Okay, well, I don't feel like exploring the rest of the house right now. Um, I'll have the opportunity to come back here another day. But, for now, let's get over to the Dunwall Whiskey Distillery. Oh, look at that. Attention, Dunwall citizens. Please clear the area. When a motorized carriage or stilt walker approaches on state business, be advised that such Go to the distillery. Oh, hostile zone. Ooh. Mm. It's like a phantom. The zone of hostility. That guy down? Ain't he just a boss? Like Slackjaw? No, no, this is one odd bird. Consorts with crazies, does rituals and the like, bone charms and such. You sound afraid. Damn right I am. Down ain't no ordinary man. Touched by the outsider he is, given dark powers. He can slit your throat across the room. <coughs> well, that'd give him a leg up for sure. It's no coincidence that most men won't even whisper his name. Is it true that he lives in the flooded district, with them weepers and wild hounds? That's what they say. Perfect place for a paid killer to hide. Interesting. Wretch, you got lucky. When you're this handsome, you don't need luck. Face like a hagfish. Pay up. Don't be sour. Say. When Slackjaw come? Not till the next batch of elixir. Oh! Whoops! Okay, so Blink does not teleport me. 
it rapidly sends me forward. Got it. So I trigger trip wires that I pass by. There's the master key. We need that. Recipe for Craxton. Craxton, I'm coming tomorrow to check the batch. Make sure you're working. Pa pa make sure you're wearing pants this time, and stick to the recipe. One part Sokolov's elixir, one part beach gum paste, two parts sugar water. That's it. The more of the real shit you cut in, the less there is to spread around, and the less I can, less coin I make. This ain't a charity. Okay, so he's cutting the real stuff with filler, and selling it. Real nice. Exit from pre plague promotional book on products made in Dunwall. Across the Empire, Old Dunwall whiskey is not only the finest libation of its kind, but also an important cultural tradition among discerning folk, sophisticated and common alike. Captains move their ships across great oceans, always have a bottle in their quarters for occasions. Fine restaurants and bars keep it in stock. And farmers across Gristol exchange Old Dunwall whiskey when healthy children are born. Some might disagree, preferring highbrow drinks such as King Street Brandy or one of the other brands from Morley. But sales of Old Dunwall have been brisk through the early years of, the Emper of Empress Jessamine Caldwin's reign, a trend that is expected to continue. Aged and bottled in Dunwall's distillery district, Old Dunwall whiskey is what you want. Interesting. Ah, man. Yeah. Made it. Ooh. That was tricky. Grenade. And spring razor. We're not going to use either of those because those are lethal. I wonder if I can sell. I can't remember if I can sell equipment that I don't use. Let's give it a quick save here. <laughs> That's an ace lever, Rodney. Okay, I got one for you. Well, give it. Okay, here goes. The nobleman laid with the scullery maid, so loudly they made quite a riot. The nobleman's wife took the butchering knife and carved herself some peace and quiet. <laughs> oh, I get it. The wife done cut a bolt, right? Yeah, yeah, that's the gist. Now it's your turn. Oh, uh, let me think. Um... Okay, yeah, I got one. Ready? I'm listening. There once was a sailor from Morley, who fancied a woman most sorely. He gave her his cash, she gave him a rash, and that's all. There isn't no Morley. <laughs> all right, you win. Classy. You win. Well, I know a hundred of these old rats. My mummy used to tell him that. Nope, oh, there's somebody in here. Is he just staring at a rat? The rat plague. Read that. Big old puddle of blood we left on the ground. Well, 
Dang it. Now he's over here. Well, we're gonna take care of that. Alright. Now that bone charm. So here's the still. Looks our count. Tovered family, four doses. Cramming family, three doses. Breeding family. So it occurs to me if I poison this. Operating structure. Attach empty elixir vial, turn the valve on, click full vial, read until empty, do not break vials, do not spill any elixir. No free swigs! Yeah, so if I poison this, I'm also going to be poisoning, poisoning not only them, but whoever they sell it to. So... I actually don't want to do that. So we're actually going to skip that. I got the bone charm from in here. And... Uh, just leave. The pipes, sneak along the pipes, sneak along the pipes. All right. We're going to continue on. What? <laughs> Such surprise. Ooh, I can upgrade Blink to level two. Yes, please. Oh, that was thanks to the Granny Rags, uh, quests. But there is another rune in that thing. Ah, oh, so much better with the longer range bl blink. Please. Confiscated rune. Corporal Meadows, we found the strange rune on the woman who used to sell pastries up the street. Not sure how she died, but since this thing looks super superstitious, we'll set it aside for the overseers. After your shift is over, take it to them for disposal or whatever they do with them. Don't forget. Alright. 
Made it! I'm a sneaky fellow. Hello, Martin. I hear the second day is when the skin really starts to come off. Mission clues updated. Okay. The way off. Is that true? Or is it the itching that really gets you? Or the rats? Jasper, isn't it? It's not so bad in here. Except I miss your wife. Ha! Huh. You don't scare easy, I'll give you that. But that'll change. Alright. <laughs> that it for the banter? Then out you go! It's me. Overseer Martin. What a sight you are in that. <sighs> Feels good to stand up straight. Thank you, Corvo. What you're here to do tonight is of the highest importance. We've got to find Emily. So kill Campbell and make it quick. Once well, we're it's not gonna done, kill him. search his body for the journal, his notorious black book, and get out of there. Campbell is meeting with a guard named Kerr now. And word from my informant is that Campbell is going to poison him. Maybe you can use that to your advantage. If we were trying to kill him, All we right, would. I won't be of any help here, so I'll make my own way back to the town of Pistols. If I see All Samuel right. the boatman, I'll tell him to pick him up in the backyard, behind the office of the high overseer. Spirits guide you, and their enemy's head hit the floor without you taking a scratch. You sure long-winded. The archive about the heretic's breath. It sounds painful. Have you ever seen the ritual? I've never seen the heretic's brand used. No, it's a rare occurrence. But I did spy the face of one so branded. A former member of our order, of course. Out on a retreat, we passed through a fishing town and saw him begging. Ah, what were his crimes? Who can say? The brand is reserved for an overseer. Or even the high overseer himself, who violates our codes and must be cast out permanently. <coughs> Remember the seven strictures, and you never need Damn worry you. about such matters. I will, brother. All right. Found our non-lethal way of dealing with Campbell. Worse. Indeed, yep, pathways. Know. Fight your way. Did you get caught in the lockdown last night? Six hours. Search the place top to bottom, and nothing to eat but the swill we hand out free. Of course we didn't find it. Did I ever tell you, one time one of the second floor shutters got stuck open, and I thought I could slip out? I couldn't find a way down, and by the time I got back it had snapped shut. I spent the rest of lockdown out on a ledge. <laughs> Maybe the outsider was watching. throughout the Empire. He's as skilled as they say. He got through there with half the watch looking for him. He had help, yes, but how far does it go? The trail goes to Martin, but Martin knows everyone, everywhere. The fourth stricture. Excerpt from a work detailing one of the seven strictures. Restrict the roving feet that love to trespass. They pay no heed to the boundary stones of a neighbor's fields. They wander into foreign lands only to return with their souls blackened by iniquity. Where have you strayed that destruction now comes behind you? Would you walk across burning coals or broken glass? Then why do you prowl in the homes of the honest or into the dens of hidden things? For the result is the same. You will fall into the void. 
Instead, rest your feet on a firm foundation, so that when the winds of the outsiders shriek against you, you will stand firm and not be overthrown. Alright, well, let's deal with this guy. Definitely sound very culty. Not to the flooded district, surely. Or did he? The sewers are a rat's nest. No, oh, I'll find you. Oh, crap. Okay. Right, knock him out before. Back to the beginning. It was Martin's plot to break him out of Cold Ridge Prison. That's clear enough. But why Gordon? The one man feared the Empire. He's as skilled as they say. He got through there with half the watch looking for him. He had help, yes, but how far does it go? The trail goes to Martin, but Martin knows everyone. Everywhere. Not to the flooded district, surely. Or did he? Who is he talking to? The sewers are a rat's nest. And once he reached the river, he might have gone anywhere. Movements of Corvo Atano. Known movements returned after an official deployment of roughly two months after departure from Crystal. Mission included stops at other major isles at the behest of the Empress, Jessamine Caldwin. Arrived bearing ill news, immediately apprehended for her murder. Last confirmed sighting, entered sewers under Cold Ridge Prison after escaping execution under unusual circumstances. Testimony from citizenry. Trey Dover. Confidence, moderate, unconfirmed. Statement, person matching sus suspect's description seen conversing with unknown woman near front gates of the Academy of Natural Philosophy. Testimony from citizenry, Benjamin Harabi. Confidence, low, unconfirmed. Person matching sus suspect subjects description seen fraternizing with ox herds, ox herds just outside the city. Uh, testimony from citizenry, Charlotte Cadenhead. Confidence, low, second hand. Statement, overheard conversation implying one of the parties had involved, involved had knowledge of the subject. Suspected alliances, none known. Recommendation, search of the estate district based on subject's prior position of authority and privilege. Well, they're not gonna find me there. Alright. Money. Money, money, money. Trials of aptitude. We read that. Disposition lo deposition log number 73826, the case of Agatha Harcourt. Deposition from Mary Wallace. I smelled a peculiar stench coming from Agatha's window one night. As I looked in the window, I saw her burning over a fire the bones of something small along with clumps of hair. Deposition of a Herbert Alcott. On several evenings, as I came home from work, I saw Agatha peering at me unnaturally from behind her curtains. On the fifth day, I felt a pain in my stomach upon her approaching her home. Outcome, Agatha's home was searched. Several outlawed items were found, and Agatha was caught as she attempted to flee from the back door. Her interrogation yielded little of use. Home and property seized for the abbey remains cremated. Oh, this is some, like, real witch hunt stuff. Happening. Branding instructions. The heretic's brand is reserved for those overseers who have committed heinous acts against the Order, but have not broken codes that would otherwise result in execution. No contact, aid, or shelter can be given to one bearing the brand. That person is forevermore unwelcome to the Abbey and its affiliates. When used, the brand is applied to the forehead, so all can see the sins of the recipient. The chemical compound acts immediately, scarring the heretic for the remainder of life. The interrogation room here at the office of the High Overseer stands ready for branding ritual should the need arise. The recipient must be strapped into the interrogation chair and restrained as the brand is applied. The heretic brand itself is to be stored in the same room. Okay. We know how to deal with him non-lethally. 
We just need to deal with him. We want to try to save Jeff Kerno. Bunch of children playing. That's all we need. Good, good. And your niece, Callista. I'm very concerned. She'll be found then. My men are searching district by district. Poor girl. Callista's a researcher. Probably found a safe place to hole up in all this chaos. If my overseers hear any words, I'll come straight to you. Time for drinks. I hope you won't refuse. It'll make this business pass all the quick. Save again. Oh, one of the servants must have been in here. Let me see. It seems I have the wrong one. Not that one. No. Ah, here we are. Hurry it up, man. Men will come get you when we're finished. Keep each other entertained. Time? I don't understand how this got so unpleasant. Oh. Okay. That's a way of dealing with it. So we're gonna brand this guy. Luck. Yeah. I'll find you. I think I might have made the wrong decision. What we have is a man aged, we'll find out. Very, perhaps slender, unusual tattooing on the face and chest, probably superstitious heresy. Wearing some sort of industrial mask when we brought him in, stolen out of one of the Wailing factories from the look of it. You're one of Dowd's men, aren't you? Caught at last. Give us a name at least. What's wrong with his eyes? Opium? Laudanum? Are you with us? What's he doing? Some kind of fit? He's gone. Here it is. A pen hidden in one of his gloves. Subject has administered some kind of poison. The effects seem to have been lethal. I'll find you, you hagfish. Crap. I may have made this harder on myself. I'll flush you out. There we go.
Alright, target neutralized. And let's get out of here. Okay. I think. Where are you? Oh, I think that rune is in. I think Campbell's secret room. Oh man! All right, let's try to find our way there. Oh, I think this is it. That's the way through. Ooh. Oh, sweet nectar. They keep triggering the dang alarm. Uh, you didn't see anything. Go away. All right. Campbell's secret chamber. Let's turn off that music. Let me on the white cliff. Do you like I read this? Yeah. Curse those fools at Coldridge for letting Curse Cole those get fools away. At Who Coldridge. knows what the man could do now? Tyrem, or Lord Regent, as he asks us to call him now, seems to have faith in all the Sokolov security devices he's put up all over the city, but I'm not so sure. At least the girl has been moved to a safe place. Oh my! Visiting her twice a week has given me ample opportunity to inspect the facilities, as they say. So there's an upside, at least. Campbell, you've been, um... My girls. Campbell, I'm not sure how my predecessor operated, but from now on, if one of my girls tries to blackmail you, you send her back to me at the Golden Cat instead of concocting some plan on your own. I've had to replace three girls in as many months, and you can imagine the business of carnal pleasure isn't booming in this plague-stricken hole you call a city, Madam Prudence. Mmm. Campbell's been up to some shady business. Naughty, shady business. Okay, we gotta get Captain Kernow and rescue him still. Okay. Safe location. So many guards, man. Go to yard. Oh man, we're not out of this yet. Out of the way. You expect preferential treatment just because you are her brother? She will burn. All witches must burn. Literal witch hunters. Take me. 
I swear I've done not someone's over there. Die. I just saved you. I just saved you, dude. You appeared as if from nowhere. We would both be okay. dead if not for you. We are forever in your debt. I cannot thank you enough. I must get my sister to safety. But first, I may know of a way to thank you. There's a safe in the bunkhouse. The combination is two, zero, three. Take what you want, and good luck. Okay. We just got a safe combo from that. That was a worthwhile thing to do. I really need to... Oh, crap. That was close. I really need another elixir. There's a bone charm. Yep. There's a rune over there. Another bone charm over there. Okay. Oh, more. Nah, the rest must die. No escape. Bone charm situation. I was asked, should we not tolerate the possession of simple bone charms among the populace? Surely this is a trivial matter. Merely a cultural practice seen across the Isles, not as terrible as the creation and coveting of more complex occult runes. Such an insidious question. The foolish distinction weakens our mission, while the stench of the outsider grows thick around us. Perhaps, as some claim, our ancestors tolerated these cursed practices during the times before our modern empire arose, to ease the lives of the lowliest serfs as they paved the roads to civilization. But there is no excuse for witchery, in this brighter industrial age. Having adju adjudicated the trials of many heretics myself, I swear that their eyes, as the clarity of the pain took their lives, were grateful to be liberated. Wow, dude. More tools. Trevor, we're gonna need another shipment of tools to destroy these accursed bone charms. Though we managed to break down over a dozen in the last month, there were more coming in from all over, the, all over Gristol, and the things are remarkably resilient. Edgar. Right. Okay. music. Excerpt from a larger, longer work. Throughout the natural world, there are ripples that we can barely perceive with our senses. An ancient music per, uh, permeating everything as a fundamental structural rule. Through it, you can work wonders without violating the natural world or begging favors from unfriendly spirits. Throughout my studies, I have found a 17-note scale derived from this phenomenon, and with the right equipment, those notes allow for astonishing effects. 
Not the least of these is the ability to calm the turbulence originating in the void, which we attribute to the outsider. Music box. Overseal Humphrey, I left you a copy of the ancient music so you might familiarize yourself with the principles I'm employing in its latest variation of Holger's device, or the music box as the men call it. As you should know, it produces harmonies that render heretical energies, or magic, inert through counterbalancing mathematical principles. Wow, okay, that sounds legit. Read the book and then make yourself useful by finding some subjects to test it on. The city is choked with corruption and superstition, so I trust you won't have to look far. Signed, High Artificer Bartholomew. Bartholomew. Humphrey, would you see to it that this valve gets installed in that little s supply depot by the loading docks? The men have been grumbling about this thing for what seems like months now, as if there were anything of value on the other side of that door it's supposed to open. Keep quelling problems like this for me and you might just make apprentice. Okay, so we need to get that to the loading dock. Oh, sweet, sweet spiritual remedy. Wow. The Metaphysica Mysterium. These are from a longer band work on supernatural ritual. It is said that we should not sully our hands when combating the forces of the void. My studies have, deter have de been deemed heretical by my brothers, but the rewards have been invaluable. I have harnessed the same energies employed by the outsider and his accursed, accursed followers while avoiding their corruption. I will prescribe a twofold method in this text. Indirection. As the unwholesome powers of the outsider use living flesh as a conduit, we can avoid being tainted by using the flesh of others instead. In containment, by using channels and barriers, we can focus these void energies in a raw state, shielding them from the perverse perspectives of the outsider. Interesting. Workshop King. I don't think I want to go out through here. We're going to try to go through the roof. Campbell. We initially thought it a great find when we came across some of the crossbows the assassins had been using to harry our patrols. The models we found, however, have proven lacking. Dowd's men have greater accuracy and range, and I swear theirs reload faster. I'm recommending that we stick with pistols and sabers, and count this as a lesson in where our strengths lie. Sincerely, High Artificer Bartholomew. Alright. So they're not so good with the crossbows. Workshop chest key. I don't have that. Exploding Hounds. Bartholomew, I've seen the harnesses you've been devising that in that workshop of yours. If you plan to strap explosives to my precious hounds and make living bombs out of them, you can count me out of your plan. I'm the master of the hounds here, and without my training, they'll never do as you request. Signed, Houndmaster Wharton. Crap. Crap. When did I save last? Ugh. Alright. Let's, uh... Try not to get caught. Alright, I'm not too worried about whatever's behind the door, so we're just gonna go for the safe, which I think is 203. be a window over here.
There it is. All right. Let's go here. Oh. No, oh, that's not the safe. That's not the safe. It's a safe. You get some stuff from it. So that's awesome. First stricture. Restrict the wandering gaze that looks hither and yonder for some flashing thing that easily catches a man's fancy in one moment, but brings calamity in the next. For the eyes are never tired of seeing, nor are they so are they quick to spot illusion. A man whose gaze is corrupted is like a warped mirror that has traded beauty for ugliness and ugliness for beauty. Instead, fix your eyes to what is edifying and to what is pure, and then you will be able to recognize the profane monuments of the outsider. Don't look at anything fun, y'all. Keep it nice and boring. You're just feeling off, that's all. It's no use. I'm sick. I can taste blood. It's been days. You know what you have to do. Stop it. I'll give you my share of elixir. Nonsense. I don't want to bleed from the eyes and lose my mind. I don't want to spread the plague to anyone else. Don't fall prey to restless hands. I'm asking you to do this. Because you've known me for so long. Can you do it? Will you? Yes, my friend. I will. Before you weep. Before you bring down the rest of us. Thank you. I mean, you're... Turn your back, my friend. Right next to him, Recite he's probably spreading it to you. I will make it fast. Restrict the wandering eyes. That look hither and yonder for some flashing thing that easily catches. Oh! What brings calamity in the next? Was that really the quickest way of doing that? That seemed like that would be excruciating. Through the shoulder? Good lord. Yeah, goodbye, y'all. Uh... The Young Prince of Tivia. Read that. It was a fun play thing. Oop. Hmm. Apprenticeship. Draft one. Bartholomew, I'm sick of mopping your floors and dusting your shelves. All of this in hopes of receiving the crumbs of knowledge that you cast my way. If you think I'm going to wait around forever... And he gave up on that one. Dear High Artificer, This is in regards to my being chosen for the position of your apprentice. If you don't mind, I would appreciate it if you looked at my record of service over the last several months. You will find that I've been... Uh... High Artificer, I was visited by Holger himself in my dreams last night. He told me I was to do great works for the Abbey, to cast out the darkness where I find it, to help, my ar to, help to arm my brothers with weapons that reach beyond the physical and into the very heart of the Outsider. I think that I am ready for this task. Eh. Friendship. Hi, Artificer ba Bartholomew. I would appreciate it if you would consider promoting me to your apprentice formally so that I might work with you full time. Thank you, Humphrey. So Humphrey is the one that Bartholomew has been shoving all that stuff onto, all the work onto. What was it, 203, I think? You guys left the door open? Come on, guys. There we go. And, oh, I got 50 coins out of that. 50 coins. Final warning. Edmund, it has come to my attention that you know where my sanctum is. If I catch you loitering by the statue of Holger again, hoping to run into perhaps 
and perhaps lays with one of my guests. I'll have you branded a heretic and cast out of the city. Regards, High Overseer Campbell. Somebody found a secret room. Last night, Windham. Last night was wonderful. I am right at this moment imagining your arms around me and your breath on my neck. I feared for our lives when your fellow overseers found us, but you proved resourceful as always. And no, I won't take your slurs and threats personally, for I know you were merely trying to throw off any suspicions they might have had of us. I hope to see you again soon, perhaps in two nights when you have leave once more, Darian. We miss you. Dear Harold, I don't generally do this, but I came across a letter your parents sent when you were first taken to Whitecliffe. Remember that we have rules in place to spare you the decision of trying to make contact with them. We can no longer walk among those we seek to protect. If you would at least read this letter to him, though your motives may be just, we know he's probably scared right now and we are unable to be there for him. Son, we miss you. We are so sorry we can't come now, come to you now, and take you from wherever they've stolen you away. Be strong, son. We know you will see your way through. Please remember us and try to find us when you're free. We love you, Mama and Papa. Oh, jeez. Be warned. Berthold, I found one of our brothers attempting to put a package in the post boxes for the others to find. I believe it to be the evidence of your sister's involvement in witchcraft you spoke to me about. I attempted to stop him, but he insisted that I would burn for her crimes if I was attempting to cover her deeds. You should warn her. See if the two of you can't flee the city before they reach her. Your friend and brother. Quite a lot of intrigue happening within the ranks of the overseers. Oh, crap! Aw, oh, man! Okay. Dang it! Alright. I've gone back. And I've replayed the stretch that I... where I screwed up. There we go. And, uh recollected everything, so I'm gonna save right now in case I screw up again which is not unlikely alright, this is the building that is I'm fairly certain there's another way in here if I remember correctly. Ah, yes. Yeah, see? I don't need the wheel. Bone charm. Water of life. Drinking from fountains recharges a small amount of health. Eh. Potions give you slightly more mana. That's handy. Hiding place. Day 15. Month of timber. I managed to steal away one of the charms they were smashing in Warehouse A. Smashing them! Such beautiful and powerful things, and my brothers have no idea. They'll never find me back here, though. Uh, nobody ever comes back here. I can break up the door, and they'll never find me. It's all mine. And he died. How did he die? Who or what killed him? Call to the Spheres, Volume 1. I think we read that. Yeah. Alright. Let's get back to Samuel. Samuel the Boatman. Corvo. Is that you? Corvo, is that you? He says. Who else would it be, Samuel? Who else would it be? Hey, Corvo. It's Samuel. I'm here. Yeah, I can see that. From the way I hear it, Campbell lived a pretty posh life. Maybe it's not my place to say, but men of the faith shouldn't live like barons. Are you ready to go? Mm-hmm. Yes, take me back to the Houndbeds pub. Okay, let's go. Yeah! Two alarms rung, two dead or five dead or unconscious bodies found, but low chaos, didn't kill anyone, and got ghost. 
I call that a success. I missed a rune. I missed a rune. I missed a rune. I'm okay with missing some bone charms, but the runes I really wanted to find. Ugh. Dang it. Admiral Havelock and Lord Pendleton are in the courtyard. I expect they'll want to congratulate you. Callista. He's alive. Thank yeah. you, Corvo. Thank you. My uncle's a good man, and one day he'll prove it. Here. I know you did this for the right reasons, but I want you to take this as a reward. It's an old heirloom one of my aunts gave me. All right. They're all good. If this is going to work, we have to take down the Lord. Sailors tell tales of monsters far out to sea. But I'll tell you, there's strange things in this river no one talks about. Lights in the water, late at night. I've seen faces, too. I mean, I don't doubt it, considering how there crazy is things are. Fast. You went God, you... and spanked the high overseer in his own house. I hope the tools I designed for you function to your satisfaction. The fact that I am standing here and talking to you affirms that this is true in several ways. You done? Thank you, Piero. The inspiration is coming faster. My mind works faster at night than it does during the day. I'm being swept away and I can no the longer The serum tell is it's not Oh, a shut up. Formula. It reacts to a wide variety of variables like Temperature, turbulence, I can see that Sokolov's mixture has a more predictable nature. Just want to listen to this audiograph. Faster. My mind works faster at night than it does during the day. I'm being swept away and I can no longer tell if it's genius or madness. When Corvo arrived, he brought some force from the void with him. Or perhaps I'm more brilliant than I even supposed. <laughs> he does think highly of himself, doesn't he? Alright. Alright, now I want to talk to you. Now I want to buy some Can things. Can I be of service to you? Yep. Maximum sleep darts. It's those. Increase. Let's get the combat sleep dart. He's got a rune for sale. Oh my god. Alright. Let's, real quick, talk to Admiral Havelock here, and then I think I'm gonna have to call it an evening. You did it. Somehow you took down the High Overseer Campbell against the odds. Yeah. I knew you were our man, with Campbell gone, we've hurt the Lord Regent immeasurably. And with Martin back, we'll have the finest strategist alive. The Lord Regent must be shitting himself in Dunwall Tower. Yes, and Campbell's journal, let's not forget. Our hope is that in these encoded pages, the location and condition of Emily Caldwin can be discovered. Our entire movement will mean nothing if we can't place the rightful heir on the throne. Have you lost your senses? Fast. No doubt the Lord Regent is holding Emily somewhere, waiting to reveal her step out as the hero and further cement his regency. If he doesn't bring the young lady forth soon, there will be infighting among the nobles as to who should succeed the Empress. Yes, time is against us. But now you should take a well-earned rest, Corvo. We will decipher the contents of the High Overseer's journal and share them with you later. Uh, not just yet. Things I'd like to do first. I love the fact that they're using these wheel lock pistols. This is really cool. Alright, I wanna go loot some stuff. Let's get Dark Vision 2. Nice. 
And let's get everything I can that's of value. There's a coin up here. Worth it. Ooh, Tibian ore. Do you mean to tell me you don't know how to curtsy properly? Please, sir. I was never in service with you. That's not an excuse. You need to learn proper decorum. The Helm Pits has seen a few lords and ladies Attention, in its day. Dunwall's if they were here, I expect they didn't want to be recognized, sir. Never mind that. Lord Pendleton ought to be shown the respect he deserves. He doesn't require it, but he notices. Yes, sir. Sorry. But even so, have you forgotten we may soon be guarding a future Empress? You will be in the presence of the most important person in the entire known world, and you don't know how to curtsy. But she's just a child. And she's not even here. No one knows where she is. Well, our masters are just the people to find her, I'll have you know. Please learn your manners before then. Did, did you do that? Yeah. Have you he's lost your senses? Being a dick. That one wasn't because I like you. There's stuff in here. Huh? Abandoned apartment key needed. Huh. Ah! Pendleton's family crisis. Cousin Anna, Morgan and C Custis continue to resist my efforts and are no longer responding to my letters. My, the servants tell me they've been absent from the manor for some weeks. My brothers have always been arrogant, utterly convinced of their own certainty, uh, and they don't really give two figs for anyone else in the world. Unless they want something, they can't take it outright. But this disagreement over the upcoming parliamentary vote has reached a crisis point. Up till now, the Lord Regent has been somewhat restrained in his authority, at least where the holdings of the gentry have been concerned. If Morgan and Custis vote in his favor, the law will be changed, and we will be at risk, aristocracy or not. I implore you, if you know where they are, to speak with them. Lord Trevor, Pen Trevor Pendleton. Memoir, Chapter 28. Waverly, Waverly, Waverly. The very name sweeps one away. She came into our cold marble hall and brought light and warmth. She changed our lives forever. It was only later I realized she was a traitorous little weasel, like all the boils. Oh my. Let's see if Havelock's got anything new. Well, it seems that we have invested in the right man with Corvo. Not only did he free Martin from the office of the High Overseer, but he went into the Viper's Nest and sorted out Campbell personally. With Corvo in our company, I suspect there is no one in the world we cannot touch. We are now committed to this path. There is no turning back. Corvo has proved his abilities beyond question. It's not anyone who can walk into Holger Square and put down the High Overseer. And now we're faced with the question, could he be dangerous? Events are going to move quickly now. The storm's rising. Interesting. Citizens displaced right. by quarantine measures are reminded go up and that the go to Hall sleep. Has bunks, food, and salaries, and in some cases, legal amnesty available for qualified applicants. Report to a recruiter to learn more about the opportunities in service. I'll go to sleep now. All right. And with that, I think I'm going to have to sign off. I've been playing for a good long while now, and uh, we've made some good progress. Uh, anyway, thank you very much for joining me. If you stuck around this long, I greatly appreciate it, and have a wonderful evening. The old man abandoned our corner and drank himself into oblivion. The hounds were the first to find him.
The river rushed in when the barrier broke. The whole district went dark. Somewhere in the basements below, Hound kills Hound, and Ronnie changes his hands. Such laughter, and then they sing the old songs, linking arms. But that was from a happier time. Deals are made here, sometimes under the influence of wine, and sometimes the influence is the point of a knife. Before the sun rises, they toss any casualties into the river. Men or hound, they all go in. They top off the line with river water. But eventually someone swoons. Then the fresh bottles are fetched from the cellars. Their fate rests on your effort, on the strength of your hands and of your heart. They stood in a circle around the candles and cut their hands to form their lines. The blood hissed as it touched the flames. The conspirators have found a safe home here. They take great care that they are not followed. The alias sweet with honey to hide the taste of the river rhyme. The sober speaking whispers, the drunk bellow. Fortunes have been won here, and lives have been lost. 